Hi. 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 It's good to see you, Mike. Good to see you. And uh, it's been like I was thinking about you the other day because of this match, and you know, I was thinking about our match, our famous match, yes. when I was just a, a youngster and mm -hmm. uh, we played in Boulder, Colorado, and went down to the last point. Amazing. Mm -hmm. And I think you and I sort of had a rivalry for a little while yeah. after that. Yeah. So um, that's a lot of great memories. Yes. Yeah. It was a great, great match. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great last shot. <laughs> I don't know. So, <laughs> so uh, how do you feel about this match? Uh, challenged. I mean, she challenged me. She's a very good player. I respect her. And uh, I'm going to give her the best match I can give her. Sure. You know, and I'm sure she's going to do the same. It's yeah. going to be a fight. Oh, yeah. Nothing's going to be easy in this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, when was your last match? Um... Three weeks ago. Oh, okay. So you've played one recently. I wasn't yeah, sure. Yeah, I played okay. two recently. Oh, wow. I played Robert Hernandez, and then I played Tyler Gibson. Okay, okay. So how have you been preparing for this one? Mm, staying up late at night, not sleeping. Okay. <laughs> That's, I mean, you know, I, she's got a really good game, and if she gets on, she can beat me. Yeah. You know, there's no question. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Well, what do you plan? I mean, as far as strategy-wise, what going into the match, what are you thinking? I'm going to fill this one out and play it shot by shot. Okay. And, and you know, I'm sure I'm going to shoot regular shots, but okay. I, I'm going to try to find something that works. I, I don't really remember what works. Okay, fair score. enough. Well, what what are your uh, what are your strongest shots? Would you say? Probably, uh, I got a good right wall bank mm -hmm, over. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, oh, over, okay. Um, four hands. It's old school. Yeah. You, you remember. I that. love it. Yeah, I you love it. That. Oh, that's gonna. It's exciting. You ate a few of those. Yeah, I, that's right. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, um, okay. I don't know if I'm gonna shoot that many four hands because my elbow can't handle it. Okay. But uh, which is another question? Are you guys playing uh, three out of five sets or four out of seven? Three out of five. Okay. I'm an yeah. old man. Yeah. No, yeah. I, I, okay. Yeah. I'm there with you, man. I'm, I'm playing a, tw <laughs> how old is she? 20? Yeah, like 21. 21? <laughs> yeah. 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 I'm afraid okay. I'm All right. Fair enough. Um, okay. Well, uh, I think that this is going to be a lot of fun to watch. Uh, it's a great test for Sarah mm -hmm. uh, because, you know, you have so much experience, so many years. Um, I'm, I'm going to be very interested to see how this, this, this plays out. I am too. It's going to be fun to play it too. Yeah. All right. Thanks. Hi. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Hey. Hi. Uh, so uh, you've challenged Mike Shoppy, yes. uh, 31st, you're 39th. Yes. Uh, tell me, what are your feelings? I'm excited. I'm nervous because he's one of the more uh, experienced players mm -hmm. in the sport. He's been playing for a really long time. Um, and I'm excited to get this experience um, to play someone that has more of a style um, from the old days. Um, I think that's going to be really cool. It's going to be a test to my game. The old days. The old days. My days. Your days. Um, but I'm really excited. I've played him a few times in weeklies, and I've really enjoyed playing him. Um, he's been one of the people that has been the most you know, supportive of me as a player, and that right. means a lot to me. So I feel really honored that he accepted my challenge and that I get to do this. Awesome. Awesome. Okay, so how have you been preparing? Um, so I've been practicing all week. I practiced with uh, Jacob, my brother. Um, and just working on uh, keeping my defense out because okay. I struggle a lot with pulling back. Mm -hmm. And so throughout this week when I've been practicing either with Jacob or with Charlie, Noah, anyone else at the 7-6, I've really been trying to focus on stay out on your sure. defense. Don't pull back. And, and, and how do you do that? I mean, is it something you just try to tell yourself mentally and, and follow through? Or I do. you do something, you lock your elbow? So I am trying to lock my elbow a little bit more. I'm not super comfortable with it, though, so yeah. it does feel weird. Um, but I'm also trying to almost stay out a little bit further than I potentially should because I have this thought process, and it might not be working, that, well, if I'm out a little bit further and I pull back, I necessarily won't be going all the way, all back, the way back, so okay. it, it might equal out. Okay. Um, so, and I'm just really trying to make a mental note. Every time I hit that goal, like, do not do that next time. Okay. Like, stop. Okay. And then, so, okay, that's on defense. What, what about offense for you? So, offense, I've been really working on my cross. Um, I've been really trying to work on this left wall cross setup that I have. 
So I go to mm -hmm. the left of the table, and mm -hmm. then I can either shoot a left wall or across from that. Okay. They're both very new, so they're not 100%, they're not very accurate, but I do think it's a deceiving setup. Okay. But then I'm also just polishing off my regular cut, right while under, mm -hmm. sometimes throwing the over how, in there. How is your over right now? Right now, it's not too good. Okay. I haven't been hitting it a lot this week. I've had a few times that I've hit it uh, throughout practice that were intentional. Um, and then my under is also really missing right now too. So I am a little nervous about that. Okay. I'm gonna try to time delay a little bit more on the under to make him come out a little bit so mm -hmm. then I can just go underneath him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but right now my, my right walls are actually not as strong as I know they can be, so I'm a little bit nervous about that. Okay, and, and if you win this match, what would that mean to you? Um, it would show me, so I didn't finish great in this last Worlds, um, and it would show me that I do know I'm the player. Well, let me reword that. It will show me that I know I know the potential I have, and it will prove to me that even though you had a bad world and you didn't do as good as you thought, you're making your way back up there, and it's okay. When, when you say you didn't do as good as you thought, it, it seemed like you had an okay tournament, or you, you had a no, couple of I, tough breaks, but you still no, had some great matches. I mean, I had great matches, but I think I finished really bad. So I okay. think that my finishing does not show the player I am, the okay. skill that I have, the dedication I have. And okay. not to disregard anyone that's in those rankings, sure. if they're proud of that. I'm okay. just, for me personally, I'm not proud of that ranking. And so for me, this would just be another step back up to where I think I belong, which okay. is in the high 20s. Okay, cool. And are you feeling confident? I feel confident. I'm a little nervous. Um, I always feel nervous before, before challenge matches, though, because you don't know what to expect. You, sure. I don't know what he's been working on. I sure. don't know. Yeah, yeah. So, but I'm, I'm really excited, okay. actually. We'll so, have a great match. Thank you. Right. Okay, here we go. Uh, Sarah challenging Mike Shoppy, trying to move back up the ladder. Just wanted to get back up to the upper the upper twenties. I'm here with uh, my partner in crime, <laughs> Jacob Weissman. So, what are you expecting to see this match? Well, I, I expect to see some old school shots by Mike. He he was sort of a his Robert Hernandez was his mentor in, mm -hmm. in, in a lot of ways, or at least he looked to Robert for how to play. And so he has a lot of forehands and oof. Um, not a lot of score on yourself, but um, <laughs> it, I hope it's like new he added. Yeah, he, I don't, yeah, I don't think that's, that's new style. That's not old style. Actually, it is old style. <laughs> so, Tell me about Mike Shoppy's history with air hockey. I was he top five at one point in the eighties. You know what? I don't know for sure what his highest finish was. I think he would. I, if I had to bet, I would say that he has been in the top five previously, many years ago. Um, more than that, I think he was more of a top ten player for a number of years. Um, him and I had uh, a match in nineteen eighty four at the Boulder, Colorado tournament, Nationals, Worlds at the time. And I was 14 years old. I think he's he was probably 20, something like that, 21. And it went down to the last point six six. And it was super exciting. Uh, it was sort of the, the talk of the tournament for a little while there. <laughs> it was a nice cross straight by Sarah. Mm -hmm. I, haven't, I haven't seen that shot from her. Yeah, it's not... You don't really expect to see many crosses from Sarah. Okay, so what do we expect to see from Sarah? Let's say cuts and right walls. Right wall overs, right wall unders, and cuts. Okay. So they're trying a left wall under. That's new for her, too. Hmm. I believe she was talking about that in her interview. Yeah, she she mentioned that she has some things she's been working on. I wonder if we're going to get to see some of that here, if, if it's actually going to show itself. Just miss that over. Mm -hmm. 
That's sort of an old school type thing, uh, you know, from Mike to just hit a quick shot from far back. Mm -hmm. See, that's a pot shot thing there, or yeah, sort of. It's just it, it's real early on 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 the drift, which is interesting. It's sort of made a comeback somewhat. You know, we saw uh, in the recent match between Munoz and and Ocraco, Munoz doing a lot of that. Mm -hmm. So you know, as they say, uh, th things th they come back around in style. Well, and you said that. So Mike's. Well, and that oh, that that, forehand, that forehand, yeah, yeah was a, that was a really great shot. Now go ahead. So you said that Robert Hernandez was Mike's main mentor. It, probably one of a number, but Robert was. The, the champ, right, um, right? A number of times when Mike was coming up in the sport, and so I think he looked to him. He, you can see elements of Robert's game in his. Okay, well, and, and I said that because Frank Perez brought Robert Hernandez right. into the game. <laughs> uh -huh. He also brought Jacob Munoz into the game. Mm -hmm. Kind of ties mm -hmm. that thread there together. Mm. And Mike uh, and Robert Hernandez played a match. But before uh, the the one he's playing now with Sarah, right? He mentioned that in the yeah. interview, and I can't remember who won. I I think Mike. Won. I think Mike won. Yeah, I think Mike won. It was a strong start by Sarah, getting up one zero here. Hmm. Mike looks like he's he's having a little difficulty uh, controlling the puck. I don't know if that's just maybe some jitters or um, he just needs to get warmed up, maybe. Oh, Start doing a circle drift, going for that cut. Oh, almost snuck the yeah, right one. got that in. It's fascinating watching Sarah uh, competing at air hockey and uh, growing as a player. Uh, I didn't, you know, and I've talked about this, I guess, a few times, just in terms of I never thought of having children that would play air hockey and love it the way I loved it growing up and still love it, obviously. Right. Um, so it's, it's neat uh, to, to watch it and see her develop and, and – uh, learn and really trying to bring new things into her game yeah like that yeah left that wall left wall under, under which saw. yeah who's that person where did this person come mm -hmm. from well, we, we've talked about sarah a long time needing to add some shots to her game yeah and is she doing it i mean has she, it looks like she might have that would uh truly open up a, a, a lot of opportunities for her to rise in the ranks. Sarah's kind of coming at the puck, puck here, attacking it in a way I really haven't seen her do. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, that's another thing that Mike uh, has, is he's got some overs. Uh, he missed one just a second ago, left wall over, but I, I, I would expect to see him hitting some overs in this match. Sarah has a, 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 a really nice setup, drift and release. She tends to rush. Mm -hmm. She's done that a number of times so far here. It's a good setup. Yeah. A little time delay there, pump fake. I like I like seeing Sarah uh, charge after pucks too. Not charge in in the in the sense of you know what we think of as a charge, but trying to go out and snag a puck that's moving towards the other side of the table. I um, agree. She she usually has a lot of trouble right snagging and yeah. But so far, it's neat seeing her uh, aggressively going after pucks. For I'd like sure. to see how that plays out uh, in the long run here. Mike 
still seems to me like he might just be trying to get warm or something. Mm hmm, mm hmm. Oh, it was a great goodness. Right wall under. Really fast right wall under. Fast release. Okay, and there's, see, there was that left wall over I was mentioning earlier. Is that a cross? That was fast. I'm not sure. It was yeah, too quick. It was, <laughs> it was a cross. And she's, I mean, she is, it looks like she's making an effort to to position herself out. Mm -hmm. Ooh, nice transition. Yeah, okay. it seemed like she was doing a decent job recentering there, too, mm -hmm. on defense. Huh. So up to a 2-0 lead. It's a good start. Cut was open. Sarah just missed it. Same with that right one over. over. <laughs> I liked that setup and release there. It was the, the timing was was good. She didn't rush it. Just, just blocked the under. Mike with a little pump fake right before a shot. Goes for another over. For uh, for an old school player, Mike does a lot of off goals. Sometimes I wonder if it, uh, some of his around the table shots are off goals. Well, aren't off goals an old school thing? Yeah, in yes. a lot of ways. Yeah. Jesse Dowdy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think this match would be a good test of Sarah's defense because I've played practice against Mike, and he, he can be tough to defend against sometimes. He has a lot of weird angles, a lot of very powerful shots. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm. Number of charges already by Mike. Oh. Cross. Yeah, it was like a <laughs> off of a cut setup. Yeah. Ooh, there she almost hit it. He, he blocked it. Yeah. Wow. Three, oh my three. goodness. <laughs> mm, shook her head. She knew that she shouldn't have gone back on her goal and. Good reffing by Brian. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Playing this match in a, a very uh, comfortable arena, the uh, Croco Arena. God, that right wall right under. Wall. So it looks very uh, steady right now. She, she hunches slightly over the table, which may, might be part of the reason why she struggled with defense. Ooh, is that cross again? Hmm. I think yeah, she's rushing. Yeah, she leads around the yeah. table shots by Mike. There's a nice cross you hit there. Trying to get himself in into this match. He's down 2 0. He's taking that block there. What, what's going on? There's another thing. Mike is a very intense player. It's going to be interesting to see how Sarah responds to that. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Cross straight off the drift there, early. I thought it was a cut. Maybe. It went to the cross side. Okay. I 
Like, it, it seems like Mike's accuracy is sort of off. And that's why I was saying I don't know if like what he just did there was intended to be an, an, uh, an off goal or. Oh, okay. Another transition shot by Sarah. So already 3 0. Sarah, the set. She's smiling. She, she uh, I guess the nerves have uh, subsided here. It tends to happen when you You're start up. a match 3 0. Seems like Sarah's rushing. but got the puck back. Ooh. Yeah, that's those forehands. That's a great forehand. So Sarah's just coming out with all these crosses and right wall unders and... The good cross by Mike. Yeah, for sure. Now Mike's, uh, he's holding his mallet sort of unique. Looks like he's got all four of his fingers in there. It's a low top. Isn't that sort of the Robert Hernandez grip? Uh, no, Robert Hernandez uses three fingers. Okay. I wonder if Mike might have hurt himself or something in these last matches. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. But he's still coming with a lot of power. Mm scores on himself. Yeah, there's something going on with his accuracy. I, I'm not sure. Um, he's just not warmed up. I know, like, when I play air hockey now, at my age, it takes a little while to get warmed up. Another cross by Sarah. Sarah's keeping the pressure on him, though. Um, a lot of the times, if your opponent's having a little struggle with accuracy or something... You have to keep the pressure on them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You don't want them warming up. Right, right. God, that cross is just deadly right now. And that's smart, too, by Sarah tactically. Just saying, you know what, if you're not going to block this cross, I'll just hit it again and again and again. See, that wasn't intended to be an off goal. He, he just he flat just out missed the goal. But, he's, but that transition play by Mike is just really reminiscent of old school air hockey players. Think about Anton Monhood and obviously Robert Hernandez. Mark Robbins, mm -hmm. great transition player. And there's that left very, all over. Yeah. yeah. Maybe Mike just needs to needs to warm himself up and get focused in. It is great to see these older players still going at it. Still playing and competing. Yeah. Well, and, and that's that's a discussion that's that a lot of times people have in air hockey is to say that age doesn't matter so much in air hockey. I'm just going to have to beg to differ. Um, the human body. Is, is pretty consistent in terms of its abilities over time. Um, and so, uh, you know, I, I think a 20-year-old versus a 50-year-old, uh, the, the brains of the 50-year-old I don't think is necessarily going to win out the speed and accuracy of the youngster. In general, I agree. I think when, in air hockey... It, there's a there's an illusion that it doesn't have a big effect because we see a lot of old players playing. I think that's more of um, reflective of the fact that we just don't have a large playing, you know, community. Oh, nice, great! She won like three games on transition shots. 
in that set. Amazing. Let's see what the uh, the stats show us. So, uh, looks like uh, Sarah, interesting, she was turning it over uh, a lot more than Mike was. Uh, but I think that uh, that's because Mike was hitting a lot of shots that were missing. He was getting them back. Mm -hmm. Which, this, yeah, in this, here. you see that here because he had a lot more missed shots than she did. Mike, only 12% in successful shots. That means 12% of his shots actually scored of the things that he, he shot. And wow. Sarah, closer to a fourth, which I think is, you need to be above that. Successful shot comparisons here from the two. Both of them using crosses uh, a lot. And you would not have expected to see a cross on there from Sarah taking up such a large chunk. Right, it, especially not 39% cross. Right. In the right wall under, uh, which we know she's got the right wall under, um, and then oh, but the big thing here is look at that transition by Sarah, fifteen percent. Wow. That's huge. Yeah. So um, shot efficiency, possession efficiency, we saw on the previous graphs. Um, look at that. Uh, Mike took one hundred and fifty-six shots to Sarah's only one hundred and fifteen, and yet she yeah. won the set and scored more points. Right. I mean, I guess you would expect that if she won the set, but... Yeah. Wow. So, yeah, she was absolutely much more efficient. And, and that sort of is... That reflects what we were seeing on the table, is that Mike seemed to be inaccurate. Um, this shows the breakdown of, of the number of the different types of shots. Look at that uh, transition for Sarah, four transition. Three of them huge, winning games on. Um... Puck snags for Sarah, three puck snags. That's great. Mm -hmm. I mean, I haven't yeah. seen that from Sarah ever. Yeah. That, that's a wonderful change. Zero puck snags from for Mike. Mike. Is, and is that 13 charges with 13 only charges, two positive results? Only two positive results wow. from those charges. Wow. Huh. All right, so set two. Let's see if, uh, if, if, if Mike can hone in, zero in, if, or if Sarah can keep putting the pressure. That's the old Northwest Quadrant attack. That's Jesse Dowdy's famous attack right here that Mike is doing. And the puck, I mean, the table goes off just as they start. Don't know if I've ever seen Mike do this attack. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I remember him doing it way back in the day. So it looks like... Uh, He's decided that he needs to slow things down. A lot of off goals. Yeah. Expecting many off goals. He's going to be doing this attack. Yeah. Let's we'll see if Sarah tries to snag anything. Makes me think of Phil Arnold trying to do off goals. Like, as soon as Phil Arnold gets the puck and you know he's going to do an off goal, I'm, like, just moving forward and to the left. <laughs> Getting ready to hit it right back at him. You are, though resident expert in how to play against this offense. Yes, well, I will, maybe. <laughs> What's your suggestion for Sarah? For Sarah is to move out a little bit. Um, and I think that's one of the reasons the out defense that I developed uh, became so effective. Because it's sort of counterintuitive, at least to at the time when it, when it was happening. And Jesse was using this very slow northwest quadrant attack and, and off goals. People would just kind of sit and wait for him to shoot an actual shot rather than just going and trying to interrupt it. Mm -hmm. You know? So I would I would suggest Sarah tries to interrupt that. Snag some off goals. Oh my lord. Strong that was a Sarah. that was a right wall under reminiscent of you, Jacob. <laughs> Amazing. Does she take some like uh, energy, something? <laughs> it's like her wrist, the way she's popping it, it's amazing. It's, oh, that was a, that was a, that was a yeah. Go on the other. <laughs> Mike, Mike left the room. The shot made him leave the room. Oh no, he went to, he <laughs> he went to get, to get another day, mallet. Okay, mallet. all right, fair enough. <laughs> I thought he just decided he was done with the match. It was a very good cut. Yeah.
Mm. Right wall under. And yeah, Mike is very intense. Look at his face. He's very, very you know, focused and that cut. Yeah. Sarah just seems like she's kicking on all cylinders. Thinking about it a little, and I, I will say that I agree that there is age does play certain limitations in air hockey. It's unreasonable to expect a 50 year old player to be able to complete compete with a real practice, you know, 22 year old. Yeah. But I think that age is less of a limit in air hockey than it is in other sports. Yeah, I like for for in, in other. Truly athletic sports. I don't know if you would have, you know, a forty-year-old Billy winning world championships. Right, but what I'm saying is that I believe that what we witness in air hockey is an artifact of a small sample. Okay, a small okay. group of people okay. that play. And if we had, like, um, look at disc golf. Right. Okay. Disc golf I, has exploded. Yeah, a good point. And 10 million people playing, the ones at the very top are the absolute cream, cream, cream of the crop. And, you know, air hockey is what it is. I love this sport and, and I want it to grow. Um, and I'm, I'm thankful that, uh, that we still are playing and we have 50 year olds and 70 year olds competing against 20 year olds. But I, but I think that. It's Pollyannish to think that it isn't having a, a significant effect on their ability to compete at the highest level. Sarah just, and we talked a lot during that game, but I, she was just she was just blowing. Yeah, yeah. she was playing amazing, um, amazing air hockey. Maybe one of the best games I've That's, seen her play. Yeah. No, I think this is for sure. So far, the best air hockey I've seen her play. I've seen her play a lot of air hockey. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. I bet Mike's just like thinking, damn it. <laughs> you know, she has to be playing the best she's ever played against me right now. And that's that cross. Oh, she's just feeling it. Mike going back with the off goals. Trying to get something to go here. Oh my. <laughs> Great right wall under there by Sarah. Quick left wall under. I like that Sarah didn't really move because he had been getting left wall overs on her over and over. So she, uh, it's almost like she was just ready to block that. Well, she was ready to block it, he just went under. Sarah's really good at transition, um, and I think it sometimes gets her in trouble, though, because, uh, and I think that has happened to a number of players that are good at transition, that they they sort of keep doing transition a little longer than they should, it, right? when they need to go ahead and stop the puck and set it up. Like, one transition shot, maybe two, depending on what's going on, but after that, you, I think you got to stop the puck and... Yeah, for for me, it's almost always transition. It just happens naturally for one shot or mm -hmm. two shots. Mm -hmm. But I'm I'm as soon as I'm consciously then aware of it, yeah. I'm trying to stop it. Yeah. So I think it's good to have that mental frame of stop the puck, stop the puck. Right. Wow, that was a I mean I <laughs> excellent cross yeah. straight. Yeah. I've. Practice with Sarah, obviously, a decent amount. Mm -hmm. I've never been worried about or seen her hit cross straights like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right wall over, I think. Then. Yeah, I think it was. So it's uh, a lot of variety. I mean, 
more. Uh, it's a lot of variety for Sarah. Yes. Um, which is great to see. Must be a little deflating for Mike to have trouble mm -hmm. getting into the match and then just your opponent is just playing mm -hmm. really, really top notch. Yeah, that's. Go ahead. I was gonna say the forehand there. I I like that Sarah's in the zone and all that, but I think the forehand that that's what you want to not do there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Here's that left wall over again. Cool. I think this circle drift setup is really good for Sarah. Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. it's helping her to get into the mm -hmm. zone. Mm -hmm. Again with transitions. Oh my wow. gosh. It's six games in a row to begin this match. What does Mike need to do to stem the bleeding? It's a difficult question because so far Mike's had, he hasn't given any specific attack enough time to work yet, I think. Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. he's getting frustrated and trying multiple things in games. He's not really sticking with a off goal, Northwest Quadrant attack. He's not sticking with a quick setup, Robert Hernandez-esque right. type style. I see what you're saying. I, I think it would behoove him to just find, just decide that, okay, I'm going to stick with this for the set. A full, oh, full set. Or, okay. uh, you know, maybe, maybe not at a full least set, a game, for, right? at least a game. Because, yeah, two games. he did the, the Northwest Quadrant for like a third of that one game, yeah. and then it was gone. So I think there's this thing where when you're super behind, you feel like you have to do something right. to get back ahead. Right. You've got to score quick or... Right. Yeah. Or you have to try these bizarre attacks, but you're not... You have to be fully committed to what it, whatever you decide you have to do in this scenario. Well, in this game, I mean, he's... He's basically playing his traditional style, I think. Uh, he's been doing a number of off goals. Here's another off goal. Okay, more off goals. Slowing it down. I think if I'm Mike, I stick more with a cross left wall under attack. Mm -hmm. I believe that crosses and left walls, it seems like, have been more effective for okay. him than his other shots. Okay. Well, in the left wall over, right? And yeah. The, the great right wall under. Yeah. <laughs> just well, as we. You just said. <laughs> he, yeah, <laughs> he's like, yeah, uh, screw that. I'm going to. Get a right wall. Off goal. He's tried that shot a number of times and gone right into her mallet. Um, it's just, I'm not sure that he's got the right angle, that right wall under. He's hitting some, yeah. but it, it's, it's an inaccurate delivery or, or angle or something. For sure. Is, Banks, Banks, in my opinion, need to be shots that get to the goal. Unless uh, the unders, I mean. Underbanks need to be shots that get to the goal before the opponent gets back. So, you know, it's more of a speed or, uh, yeah, speed than it is accuracy. Right. But you can also do certain things to freeze your opponent yeah. and ma make it so yeah. you have a head start. Right, right, right. right. That, that's why we have the pump fake and the time delay with mm -hmm. the bank as well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And Sarah... She is switching it up here and trying to play further out, but generally plays a bit further back. Mm -hmm. So I think just trying to force unders on her, unless you have insanely fast unders you can hit from real deep on back close mm -hmm. to your, your goal, mm -hmm. I don't see the unders being super effective against her. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Right. She went, so she went for the right wall, it looked like two times, and then the third time was a charm. I feel like that Mike is hitting the puck too early on his drift. 
<laughs> of course, he proves, <laughs> proves me proves me wrong, but that was an over. And again, with the great cross straight, whoever this girl is that we've <laughs> never seen before. Introducing, uh, you know, a new player on the scene. Oh, and then she goes for a snag. Oh, wow. Mm. It's a rough break. Yeah, this uh, new cross straight could be exactly what Sarah needs in her game, thinking about it. Oh, it absolutely is. It absolutely is. I mean, it's almost like with her high, the way she tends to do that circle drift, it mm -hmm. creates a perfect opening for that cross. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then she, she'll start, you know, when she's already doing it here, she tried the cut, she'll start mixing the cut in with it. And once that's, she's got that down, um, the sky's the limit. I love the uh, the Texas uh, on the wall there, and it, if you look, it reflects on the table. Mm -hmm. It's kind of cool. That's great. I think uh, Brian Acroco has crafted a, 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 a great competition arena here for air hockey. Yes. Yeah, it's a great little ex exclusive mm -hmm. air hockey mm -hmm. clubhouse. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ooh, that was a great she, perfect yeah, she, right she, wall under. She, she basically, yeah, fake. yeah. Well, and she she basically tried to bait him and make him think it was a cut. I mean, he he bought hook line sinker. See, that was just inaccurate, but I think that was oh, that was a great <laughs> great a right wall under. under. But the cut she did before that, she just missed it. But I think it was actually a good change up where she went suddenly faster. Mm -hmm. than she had been. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Sarah's mm -hmm. also playing with more little intricacies in her game than I've ever seen before. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Those little super advanced things, like just slightly varying the time delay, the positioning of your mm -hmm. hand, your mm -hmm. arm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's almost like she's had a an epiphany you know that these little mm -hmm. leaps that everybody makes at times in you know an activity or a sport and suddenly something clicks inside and it's almost like neo in the matrix realizing that you don't try to do it you just do it mm -hmm. it's letting the puck flow Mike's fighting. I mean, he's, he's fighting, really fighting hard. hard. He, he needs, does not want to go down seven yeah, games. He really needs this game. You don't want to suddenly be, be facing down the instant end of the second set in a three yeah. out of five. Yeah. That's important to remember here, too, folks. This is a three out of five. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. You know, getting 4 0 the first set always hurts, but. You don't especially, want to get the second set. <laughs> well, especially if it's a 3 out of 5. Sure, yeah. Oh, I like this. Sarah's just ready to pounce on the puck. Mike, you know, he's sticking. You know, we were talking about it. He's sticking with the, the, the off goals this game. Oh, and he gets it. Oh, he gets the game. Well, and there's where you may be talking about Sarah's transition play hurting her a bit. Right, because she was she, wanting she was to move so much. Yeah. yeah. But it's okay. But yeah. I don't think she necessarily did anything. I, yeah, I don't think so. I think game. Mike I think Mike just battled his heart out to win that game. Okay, Mike's sticking with his off goals. Little bit of that reverse circle drift. Mm-hmm. Jesse Dowdy uh, started doing that reverse circle drift. And it, uh, from what, what I've heard, it went excellent for him in your challenge match <laughs> with him at Green That's, Game Room. Well. Uh, you know, it, it, 
this is going to be interesting to see is, you know, overall statistically how the charging goes in this match. Because I've mm -hmm. seen Mike, you know, we saw on set one, he had a, what was it, 13 charges, something like that. Um, and only two positive results. And, and basically what a positive result is, is either you score or you get possession mm -hmm. off of that charge. Uh, and if, if your opponent retains possession um, or you commit a foul or something like that, you know, it, the, the question is, was the charge a success or not? Um, and I'm not sure what percentages would be good. I know that two positive results out of 13 charges I think is not good. I think right. that's not good enough. There's a, there's a point at which you know the, you 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 go over the you go over whatever critical mass it is, and it becomes overall a net positive to you. I don't know what that number, especially is. because I would assume with something like crosses statistically, it's hard to factor in the intangibles, right? Of, mm -hmm. of I'm sorry, not crosses of charges, charging, right, 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 of, of, of messing with your opponent's head. But yeah. I I do agree that. Two out of 13 is not... Not the number. Not the number. Okay. What is the number? Uh, three out of 13. <laughs> three out of 13. <laughs> yeah, I don't think that's the number either. Sarah um, seems to be rushing here. I'm just cutting in to say that. Yeah, yeah. But no, it would be interesting. I think once you get to maybe around 40% okay, then positive then results, you can maybe make an talking, argument. But that's just... Talking. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Yeah, she she's pulling out uh, the opponent with her under. I haven't really ever seen her do that. Mm -hmm. Well, when you're when you're you're getting those straights in so well, you know that cross. Mm -hmm. Right, and I think that's what she's doing. She's using the cross setup a little bit and then hitting mm. the under off it. All right. Yeah. That's well. A good rebound there by Sarah. Curious your thoughts on some of the other statistics that we've been taking a look at. Um, shot efficiency for one. Uh, so the number of times you score, the percentage of time that you are scoring when you're taking shots. You know what should the number B. What is a good yeah. number? Depends on the player's style, right? Uh, absolutely. For it, yeah. example, me versus Colin, I assume I have higher shot efficiency than him. Because he, but, but that's because he hit so many off goals. goals right. Okay. All right. Um, but I, I don't think I could say that my my shot efficiency number right means I'm a better player than Colin. No, obviously no. I'm, I'm but I'm curious there's there's got to be mm -hmm. some idea, right? I, I again, I, I, unfortunately Mike, you know, had a really rough first set and so his numbers, you know, Are reflected low. that, yeah. right? I, I think that that's a good example though of you know, numbers that we would want someone to improve if they were looking at their game and and you know, and how it plays out. Um I, I don't know, I think uh, 25 to 30% shot efficiency, maybe, is what we want to mm -hmm. get. Yeah. I think at the highest level, if you have a, a non-off goal game, a game where every time you have the puck, you're basically trying to score it, mm -hmm. you need to at least have above probably a 33%. Okay. Right, yeah. To, to, to win at the highest level. Okay. And that even might be too low. I don't know. Is Sarah calling a, a foul on herself? You know, we mention this almost every time we have a match, yeah. but it's uh, that that honor that's displayed in the sport of air hockey. It's quite commendable. I think Sarah should go down just one notch here in tempo. Oh, I like that. Yeah, I like yeah, the, the little a... circle around the puck. It's nice. I'm wondering a bit about Mike's choice of attack because 
He's having tr trouble scoring on Sarah, on winning games, on keeping up. And the kind of attack he's using just adds more variables. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I, I wonder if... You want him to, to, just, to just hone just in on, a, like, three or four shots right, and or, just or be, less and focus on those. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's too much variety, I think. It's a great under by Sarah. Yeah. Oh, Ooh. good. Yeah. Good cross. I think it's a cut. I'm sorry. That yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, that one was a cut That one's a sure. cut. Okay. Yeah. It's been a long day. <laughs> Number of other stats uh, were interesting to look at is... Uh, Missed shots, how many missed shots you have, uh, what percentage um, of your overall shots you've taken. Like, and, and that has to be divided out between, you know, you have to make a determination when you're, you're doing the stats uh, on whether a shot was an off goal or whether it was truly missed. Right. Sometimes that can be a little unclear. Yeah. Like that shot right there, was that an off goal? I don't know for sure. It looked like it might have just been an act inaccurate cut. Right. Right. That was an off that goal. That was an off goal for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I think that one was an off goal too, for sure. That mm -hmm. was a missed shot. Right. So it, yeah, turnovers. It's, it's hard, hard to turnovers is another one to look at. Uh, we talk about this a lot uh, in the highest levels of air hockey um, that you're looking at a matter of a few possessions a game, you know, difference between, you know, uh, some of the top players. And so those 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 little mistakes add up. Wow. That was she, a, she ends it strongly yeah, strong on, end. on that cross. She mixed it up the shot before with that left hole under and immediately went for the cross straight. Mm -hmm. Master class. Yes, yeah, really nice. So uh, take a look here. It looks like uh, Sarah's still turning it over a lot more than Mike, um, which is interesting given that she's uh, winning pretty, 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 uh, mm -hmm. uh, pretty dominant. Looks like Mike's gone up a few points in his uh, shot percentage. He was at 13, I think, 12 or 13 after the first set. So now he's a little bit higher. Sarah's right at that one-fourth percentage you were talking about. Mm -hmm. So Sarah, we still really see just the cross. Similar, yeah. Cross with right while unders cuts in transition. That's pretty much her game right now. Now, see, for Mike, I think this probably yes. is at what he wants to see. Right. It's too much. It's it, it's too many pieces of pie here. Um yeah. I mean, I like the right wall under at 24%, mm -hmm. but, you know, the previous set, he had a much higher cross percentage, mm -hmm. and then we see him just mm -hmm. going away from that. Right. Wow, 307 shots taken, taken by, by Mike. Mike. Yeah, but in the difference here is that missed but recovered. So he's, he's hitting a lot of off goals mm -hmm. or missed shots, getting them back. Um, but it's not, it, it's not translating into points. Yeah. So, eight games to one, Sarah, so far. Mm, mm, dominant. Um, okay, so here, I'm just going to kind of go right towards the charges because we were talking about it. Mike is at 27 charges. Five of them have had a positive result. Um, it's about a fifth, so what is it, 20%. Mm -hmm. um, and then Sarah, she's had nine charges with zero positive results. Yeah. She might consider stopping Sarah, charging. I think um, Sarah should stop charging but for sure. You see, she's got six puck snags. Yeah. And so I wonder how many of those puck snags came off of the charge. It's hard to know. Well, it's interesting yeah. to say that Mike well, I still guess had them zero has. puck snags, but 27 charges. Right, right. And, and, and I should restate, obviously none of Sarah's charges had anything to do with the puck snags because that would have been a positive result. This game, I believe, is being refed by the uh, 
great 11-time world champion Danny Hines. That's right. For this match, rather. This set. Mm-hmm. One of those things. Yes, yeah, something. There was right. a... Left roll under mm-hmm. by Mike mm-hmm. that I was kind of talking about, but Sarah just comes right back with that cross straight. Hmm. Okay, and those are the you know it's one of those overs that 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 Mike has and it I think if Mike can stay with that speed um, and focus on just the overs and maybe the cut. Mm. that's another stat that we, we haven't talked about which is self scoring it's not a huge big part of air hockey but it happens and Sometimes it really swings games. And it's very mentally deflating, yeah, too. Yeah, it's rough. Especially a close game, close match. Or if you've been, like, he, he's down in this match. And, you know, scoring on yourself is not, is not confidence building. No. Mm. Good get, Becerra. Yeah. Might be a good time to talk about some of the the matches that are coming up. Uh, we've got Keith Fletcher coming to town, and he's going on a uh, sort of a, a gauntlet type situation where he's going to play four challenge matches in two days. Yeah, against. Or actually, I think he's done. He's doing three days now. <laughs> okay. So so it's going to be against Jacob Munoz, you, Jacob Weissman, Danny Hines, and Colin Cummings. Yes. And Colin is the last one. The last yes. match the last at the one. very end. Um, I, I was wondering about that when I was looking at it. I was saying, okay, so is he scheduled these in this particular way where he's thinking, okay, Colin's the one I feel like I for sure won't beat. So maybe I just play him last. But maybe, maybe he thinks that, you know, Munoz, he has the highest chance to beat. So he's playing him first. I, I'm, I'm wondering yeah. if Keith has a... It's going to be very interesting to see what happens. Um... And I, no disrespect to, to you, Keith, if you're listening or watching, but I don't anticipate you winning any of the four matches. Um, uh, but if you do, then, man, I'll be, uh, I'll be there uh, telling you what a great job that was. Um, I, I think that um, he's going up against the top four players in the sport right now. Yeah. And well, I guess you could you could throw Vince in there yeah. Vince as well. Yeah. Um, you know, being I I think there's probably four there's probably five or six guys you could think of as being at the very top of the sport. And they could kind of mix and match with positions, but there was that uh, circle around the puck again. I will say for Keith, you know, even if he comes in and loses all four matches, it still be. Amazing practice for him. Yeah, it will be Ideally. amazing practice. I guess I. Though I don't know if you get diminishing returns maybe on the second day of just. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, maybe me predicting that he loses all of the the matches will give him motivation. He needs to win some. Then April 9th, we're having the Carter Cup. That's so exciting. The Carter Cup. Uh, if you're not aware of the Carter Cup, it's a, a it's a four person team challenge uh, that was invented back in the early '90s uh, by uh, Don James, and we had a number of classic matches for many years. Unfortunately, the competition went by the wayside. Um, it wasn't promoted very much, and it, it sort of became forgotten. Uh, so it's neat to see that it's coming back. And, and so the match is going to be uh, Jacob Weisman, Jacob Munoz, um, 
Brian Acrocco and Danny Hines mm-hmm. is on, one team, yeah. the Houston team, versus a San Antonio team, which is Colin Cummings, Vince Sauceda, um, uh, Marcus Quintanilla, and Doug Quintanilla, Howard. Quintanilla, something Quintanilla, like that. Yeah. Right, and Doug Howard. Uh, just on paper, a razor-thin match. It, yes. it, it could, I could definitely see it going down to the very end. Back here, uh, it, you know, it, it looks like Mike is is is, is putting up a, a, a bit of a fight here in this in this second game of the third set. That's what we'd expect. Mike's a fighter. Yeah, for sure, for sure. I like that little setup he did yeah. there. Yeah, I like the way he's 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 got much more of a touch and a flow to his game right yeah, now. Yeah, I like the way he was turning his wrist there. Mm-hmm. I believe in the interview, that was a, a wicked wonderful right under. Weissman right wall under. <laughs> wicked. I believe in his interview, Mike was talking about how it's difficult for him to hit his forehand right now. Mm-hmm. Maybe that's... I, I wonder how much that's impacting. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I noticed when he was setting up early, earlier for that cross, kind of. But, and there was a forehand, forehand oh, cut. Well, it spoke too soon. But but yeah, but, but, he may be but avoiding that, that it. He he was like tweaking his hand a bit, as if kind of pulling for the forehand and then mm-hmm. going and doing the cross. Right. So I I wonder if that kind of setup right is more effective if you're scoring and, forehands actively. So here here we had a self score for Sarah. That's you know a, in a tight game. Big swing. Mm, good. Give over there. Mm-hmm. And he's going. They went for another forehand. Mm. So there was a charge with a positive result that Sarah got. Mm. Ooh, ooh, almost had a good get. So can uh, I mean if if Sarah goes on to win this match as convincingly as she, it, it, she has played so far, what does that say about her chances of of moving up the ladder even further? It says to me that I think she could definitely win matches against people in the upper twenties for sure. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, go back to the high twenties, which is I believe her highest rank ever was. I'm sure she'll love me for not knowing. Uh, 22, I think. Okay. Something well, yeah. l- mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. But I'm sure that she really could ev- elevate her game and get to that next level. Get mm-hmm. to the actual, mm-hmm. you, you know, the higher pro divisions. Right. And there was another score. that so Yeah, that game. Two self-scores that game. Yeah, that, that's... Well, it's a little bit of uh, oxygen that Mike needs to keep his... Mm-hmm. His, mm-hmm. Uh, Embers at this point, burning. Mm-hmm. There's never been um, a female to finish top ten. Yeah, I know Sarah would love to do that. I know Allison would love to do that. Yeah, the way Sarah's been playing this match so far, I I, I do agree that I, I think she could be the first woman to finish top ten. Three. Mm-hmm. If she really, really... I mean, she's got to take what she's demonstrating here and, and hone it. Yeah. You know, really fine-tune it. Um, throw in another one or two wrinkles. But yeah, yeah I mean, but like like that get that type of puck snagging, 
that's something she's needed to do for a long time. Yeah. Yeah, she still has some stuff to work on, some lapses there, right? Yeah. Like, just, like she could have gotten that book. Yeah, yeah, she yeah, could have yeah, gotten, yeah, gotten that book. Yeah. Um, in that one, she could have gotten. I mean, not to like start like pointing out all the things she could be doing, but but yes, I mean, she, she's and that was right. a nice cut. She's she's made a, a leap here, which is exciting to see. Uh, to go one more step, I think, is needed to, to to be able to have a shot at the top ten. Because there's another piece to this, which is that, you know, Mike's looked sort of off. Um, you know, maybe uh, having a, a couple of challenge matches recently. Uh, he's he's maybe sore. Uh, it's possible. Um, and and so if Sarah was was playing against somebody that was really scoring effectively, consistently. That puts a different t type of pressure it, on you. It does. That being said, off or on, whatever, Mike is a very intense player. Mm -hmm. And mm. his his specific offense, too, where he's hitting a lot of off goals. He, he's forcing Sarah to have to be able to kind of stay in it and stay in the intensity. And he just won this game and is up 2-1 this set. Mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So he he's he he is making her fight for it, and I think a lot of the games have been pretty long too, with a lot of going back and forth. And Sarah's really had to fight and dig to put the games away. Right. One, one. All right. So Mike up two one in games. This is. So now we've got some pressure for Sarah. Let's see how she responds. Ooh. Almost got that puck there. Two, one. Sarah's going away from that circle drift here. Yeah, you're right. You're right. She scored, but right. But I think there's she needs to go back. Yeah, yeah, she needs to go back to the, the circle drift. I think Mike's saying, you know what? I have to win some games. I have to hit these forehands. Mm -hmm. It mm -hmm. hurts my arm. Now here's a circle drift by Sarah. Rushed it a bit, but I think mm -hmm. that's you, what you she like to do. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Get her into a, a rhythm. Yeah, he blocked that. He, he, ooh, ooh, he blocked that he blocked too. Blocked them both. Gotta, yeah, got a flood in. Unlucky bounce. That that was a forehand right, a forehand left wall over, which is that's Sarah's, Sarah's dream shot. Yeah. He just scored Sarah's dream shot on her. So it'll be interesting to see if Sarah can cover from the psychological trauma <laughs> of having that shot scored on her. Well, she just scored she on, on herself, herself as a result. She that the his forehand left all over was worth two points. <laughs> yeah, Mike looks sort of zeroed in here. Nice left wall under. That was a great shot choice by Sarah because uh, she'd been going over to that right side so much. And again, Mike with these forehands, it's like accurate and mm -hmm. quick under there by yeah, Sarah. Yeah. This is the game where the tide could turn for Mike mm -hmm. if he if he beat Sarah this game. Yeah. Game five. Great, great tie. Yeah, great tie. Sarah's it's interesting. Sarah hits some such really strong, powerful, accurate shots, um, but then at times she misses them pretty yeah. far. So oh, an ending. Sarah gets that game, nice. ending it with a cross straight. That's an important game, boy. 
tying a set up 2-2 as opposed to going down 3-1 is such a difference. Good cut by Mike Shoppy. Mm -hmm. One, one. And she's, she's gotten a lot of transition shots. Oh, and she, but, and she yeah. And yeah, so that was around. yeah, and, and that was a positive charge result. Be interesting to see. Two. Wow, that. Yeah, yeah, that right amazing right wonder. Mm -hmm. She's really snapping it. It's it's uh, different than I've seen. Ooh, he almost scored himself again. Right. It's good to see because what's a Weissman without a circle drift and a good right wall under? <laughs> well, you need a cut shot in there. And it, yeah, correct. Yeah. And she has that. She has that. She good does. Cut. She does. She does. <laughs> A crocodox attack. Mm -hmm. Fitting in the uh, in the Croco Croco arena. arena. Yeah, nice, nice shot. Oh, the oh, table turned off. But yeah, the yeah, table yeah, had yeah. turned yeah. off. Yeah. yeah. Oof. Yeah. Mike is not happy about that. Yeah, and the table turned off right before he struck the puck. Mm. So it doesn't count. If he had struck the puck, and it was on the way to Sarah's side before it turned off, then the point would have counted. Three, two. A lot of players think if the table turns off, no matter where the puck is, it's out of play. But it's actually not true. Four, mm. It's out of play at the end of the current play. Mm. Another charge with a positive result. And another charge, not a positive result. <laughs> Mike's really being aggressive right now. Mm. Mm. That's a good, great transition shot. So he's bringing it, Sarah. He does not want her going up match game. Oh, oh, oh. Great cross there. Yeah. Set it up just like a cut. Mm hmm. went right back for that cross I think I, I, I would you know if I was whispering in her ear I'd say a time delay left wall under Ooh. Five, mm -hmm. five. Mike definitely is is not laid down I mean he's fighting fighting I don't know if any air hockey player from the 80s who's still playing today is going to lay down. Yeah, that's for true. You. That's true. It takes a certain something special to mm -hmm. still be competing. Yeah, Sarah needs to go, in my opinion, she needs to go to that left side a little bit. I agree. I agree. She, When you have that cross working so much, it's just such a mm -hmm. obvious and easy second shot mm -hmm. to be working mm -hmm. off of that cross. She's made a, some of these games a bit harder than they actually need to be for her by staying away from that level. Right, getting so stagnant. Much. But that said, she did she did tell us that that left wall under is a new shot for her, and she feels like it's somewhat inaccurate. Right. So maybe right. that's why she's not going for it as much. Yeah. She also told us that about the cross, and she yeah. scored the cross all match. So yeah. I don't know if I believe yeah. her. <laughs> Yeah, she may have just found the pocket on that cross. You know, just a couple went in early on, and then it really felt right. Sometimes, and I remember this. Oh, Ooh, she tried the left wall. I remember this back in the day uh, when I would play challenge matches that I would learn 
new things about my game and mm-hmm. what to do in the midst of challenge matches. They would emerge, um, and uh, and and that was that's one of the great reasons to so play like, long yeah. challenge matches because that will happen. It forces you to develop, to push, to grow. And it's six six this game. Mm. Mm. It's a massive point here. Whoever scores it. Charge. Not a positive result. What's she going to go for here? She should go for that left wall under, but she'll probably go for a cross. Or a right right wall over. over. Nice. Nice. Okay. Right. So Sarah's come back from being down two to one in this third set, and she's now at match game. Some really strong, gritty play. And there's that left wall under. That's all it is. It doesn't have to be that accurate because he's charging so much. Yep. And the cross. cross. And that hurts when you charge it. Yeah, and miss but yeah, it scores. It scores, yeah. Charging a straight that still scores is definitely one of the the worst feelings in air hockey. Uh, only to be outdone uh, by shooting a straight. And having it stuffed right back down your throat. Yes. That's a pretty bad feeling. That's a bad feeling. <laughs> oh, God. Transition. Sarah up 3 0. Mm. Okay, Mike. Slowing it down. Trying to build up time, get Sarah out of her out of her zone. Mm-hmm. 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 See how long will he continue it though? Because you know he we talked about it earlier where he started a northwest quadrant attack, but he only followed through for a couple, you know, maybe a third of the game. Nice cut. Oh. Ooh, I haven't seen a one-two or you know. Sarah wants that puck. Yeah, she does. And she got it. Oh, and she did. Gives it up. It's four to one, Sarah. Mm, that was sort of a slow shot by Mike. Mm. That left wall under is there all day for Sarah right now if she hits it. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Some of that uh, around the table, that classic. Mm hmm. 80s around the table. Mm hmm. Good timeout by Sarah. Yeah, I really, there. really like this timeout. You're up 4-2, which is, is great. Okay, good. Yeah, it was a good change up there. But he's coming back, and you feel yourself getting stagnant, so taking that timeout really is a great idea. Yep, proved by that shot you just scored right there. Mm -hmm. oh. And there's the left there's wall the left under. under. Yeah, perfect timing. I uh, can't wait to see how charges pan out because there's been a lot of charging. And there was a good get. Oh, she went for the left wall under again, mm -hmm. just missed it. Oh, uh, ooh, that's not ironically a, on a charge. Yeah, unironically maybe. <laughs> Oof, so she wins. Great match by Sarah. Let's see how uh, 
how the stats. 12 games to three, I think. I believe so. Let's see here. So uh, Sarah was the, the turnover queen, so to speak, in the match. Uh, even though she won convincingly, she made it harder than she needed to. As yeah. you said, she gave up a lot of pucks that she didn't need to give up. Uh, so that'll be interesting for her to look at and, and, and think about. Looks like Mike continued increasing his, uh, his shot percentage. It was up to 16%, but I think far below where a person probably needs to be. You agree yes. with that? I, I agree for yeah. sure. Yeah. And I mean, we should take into account that he was doing so many off goals, but still. Right, right, right. Um, There's Sarah with that. Yeah, Sarah winning cross. with cross. It basically a shot that she's never shown in any competition before. Uh, amazing. And, and that transition still up there at 14%. That's so cool to see. We can see that it looks like Mike's graph is just the story of the match. He had yeah. trouble finding Anything, a specific yeah. go-to. Yeah, he didn't have a go-to shot. Um, so 98 points to 73. Pretty significant difference, even though Mike took 61 sh more shots than right. Sarah did. Right. Though he did do a lot more off goals. He did. He did a lot of off goals. A lot of off goals. Yeah, 12 games to 13. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mike with more turnovers. Yes. Yeah. But it was it wasn't as much of a percentage because he had a lot more shots. And so here we go with, uh, I want to look at the charges. Okay, so Mike, 58 charges, wow. 10 positive results from charging. Wow. Uh, Sarah, 16 charges, one positive result. Fine. But nine puck snags, that's phenomenal. That's great to see from Sarah. And then mm -hmm. her, she scored 13 transition shots. Wow. Interesting that Mike had no puck snags. Zero. Yeah, he didn't. He didn't. He wasn't moving out after that. But great match. Okay, so uh, that was a really, it was a, it was a sort of lopsided, but it was real close in a lot of spots. Tell me what you think. Well, she was just in front of me in the games, and if I got in front of her in a game, she was able to power through it. Yeah. She's got a very powerful offense. Mm -hmm, and she mm -hmm. played extremely well. Yeah, uh, I was hitting. The, I used my hard mallet most yeah. of the match, and I hit the puck very hard. Yeah, and if yeah, I yeah. hit her mallet, it just died. Just died. And, yeah. and you know you can't hit her mallet. You got to hit the goal. What I was amazed with when I was watching you is, I mean, you're you're actually really really fast still. <laughs> you know, I, you're a little I older than I, I am. I feel fast. <laughs> yeah, but you were really moving. But I had to. I had to do yeah. everything I could. You know what I mean? Yeah. She's, she's a top player. I yeah. mean, you know, yeah. I, I did everything I could. Sure. I'm worn out. <laughs> um, yeah. And uh, well, you know, she she brought it and she yeah. handed it to me. I hear you. Know, you. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, what was working for you? Not much. I yeah. was getting a few over the mallet right wall banks. Uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I was getting the cross cut when I set it up properly. Okay. Um, well, what, what was that? How would you set it up properly? I just set it up on a straight drift and cut it. Okay. And sometimes okay. when it came off the back rail, it was easy. Uh, sure. I know that the Wisemans pride themselves on stopping the cut. Yeah. And I, I was determined to get a few. And sure. I, I got a few. Yeah. Um, I was not getting the cross straight. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. and I was trying. I just wasn't mm -hmm. getting. I wasn't setting it upright or something. She, she could read it or something. Mm -hmm. So, uh, that made it very difficult because that's sure. a big part of my game is to hit the cross straight, and I just could not get it. Yeah, yeah. So. Well, you shot. You hit one shot in particular that's very memorable. Which, uh, when I had interviewed Sarah uh, for you know the air hockey interviews, I know what you're talking she, about. She she yeah. wants uh, to have a real flashy. Left wall well, over, over forehand. Yeah. Forehand. Yeah. I, I, was, I you when hit I, one. I hit it and I thought about it. I thought, as soon as I hit it, I thought, well, when it went in, I thought, yeah. that's the yeah, shot that's she, the wants. she wants. That's right. Yeah, that's <laughs> but it's a very hard shot to hit. Yeah. It's, it's yeah, extremely yeah. hard to hit. Yeah. So. 
Well, it was it was it was a lot of fun to watch you play. Um, um, you're still fast as you used to be, so it's I guess a oh, matter of fast. you don't think so. Brian was telling me in, inside in between sets. He says, "Bring out the old so? Mike Shoppy of '86." So I'm like, oh, uh, "He doesn't uh, exist." Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? I hear you. I yeah. just I can't do that. And I'm, mm -hmm, I used mm -hmm. to be able to get out to this line quick. I can't do it sure. anymore. So okay, uh, pretty worn out. Yeah, you know I can't. I don't have the endurance I used to have either. Yeah. So. Join the club. Uh, um, <laughs> yeah. Well, it was a pleasure watching you. Play. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. Appreciate it. All right. All right. <sighs> wow. Well, that was an exciting match. So yeah. tell me your thoughts. Um, I really wanted it. I needed it to prove to myself um, that I do have the ability to be an amazing player. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. By far, besides when I play Allison, because she's my, you know, mm -hmm. That was my favorite challenge match I've ever played. Okay, so it, how come? I really had to push myself. I had to think outside of the box. Um, people tell me a lot that I'm a one-dimensional player, and that's something that I'm really trying to break out of, mm -hmm. and Mike had to make me do that. Mm. Because there was times when some of my uh, regular shots that I usually do, like the right wall, just the right wall cut setup, mm -hmm, wasn't mm -hmm. working. Sure. And I had to think, well, what else can I do? And like I had said, um, in the previous interview, I've been working on the cross in the left mm -hmm. wall, and so I just told myself, well, you might as well just do yeah, it and yeah. see because sure. you're going to have to do something. Yeah. Um, and then even you in between the match, you were like, there's two sides to the goal. Yeah. <laughs> and so I was yeah. like, okay. Yeah, um, but I, I'm i just, I'm really happy, and yeah. I feel just, it was really awesome getting to play him. Okay, cool. Well, I felt like that I've, well, I know for a fact I've never seen you play that good. Um, yeah. yeah, seriously. Uh, you look like someone who definitely can be in the top 10. So, you know, I want to encourage you to, you know, keep pushing yourself, keep thinking outside the box uh, because you were hitting the puck with authority, with uh, purpose, with intent. And when you got stagnant and you started only hitting right, right. walls and, and crosses, right walls ways. and crosses. Um, you know, it, 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 it didn't take as long as maybe it used to take yeah. for you to realize, oh, I'm doing too much over here. Yeah. yeah. And uh, the only thing I didn't really try to focus on, which I said I would, is the pulling back. Is that still my weakness? I felt like you did better. Okay. But but when Mike got into his transition, yeah. a lot of times you were right yeah. back on your goal. I was on my tippy toes the whole yeah. time. Yeah. His setups were just sick. Yeah. Well, yeah, he he moves the puck so fast. It's almost like he moves his whole body forward yeah. really quick and then back and then yeah. up. And it, it creates this sense of pressure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and his ability to hit multiple shots from that one area mm -hmm is just, it scares me. It was really scary, because I would think, well, he's done, he's tried a few of these, so maybe he's gonna try, you know, sure. a different shot. Sure. And he would try, he would stick with what he was doing, mm -hmm. but then sometimes he would switch, and I just, sure. at some points, was left not knowing what to think about blocking. Right. So you, want, you, you started out the match winning six games in a row, and then Mike comes out, and suddenly he starts yeah. playing and a I, completely different style. I knew style. he was going to do that okay. because, you know, his match with Tyler, mm -hmm. Tyler had won, was mm -hmm. up a little bit, and Mike came back. And mm -hmm. so I know that Mike is known for that and can do that. And so I, you know, was prepared for, you know, a, a battle, not just this quick. Right, but what I'm saying is, is that he changed styles. Yeah, yeah. Okay. well, he yeah. started to do um, a slower, mm -hmm. like, off-bank bank, bank, not off bank, but off, off goals, goals, off yeah. goals, and it, you know, tires someone out, and it makes me sure, just start sure. to kind of like get like in mm -hmm. this mesmerized mm -hmm. feel, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden he would just whip a shot. Mm -hmm. So he was, he he kept each game and each set, he kept changing up his setup, and so it was hard to stay on top of yeah. um, the game. You had a few, uh, not a few, you had a number of right wall unders that were the best right wall unders I've seen yeah. you hit before. Uh, I felt... I felt like Jacob when yes. I was when I was hitting them. <laughs> I felt that like that Jacob sort of body movement he does, mm -hmm. and I think maybe by with practicing with him, right. I've started to you adapt start to, to yeah. it. Yeah, you, you you feel that the 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 way the way to move. Yeah, you you kind of sense it, and then you start emulating it. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Well, it was a great match. Thank you. Uh, and keep it up. 
uh, yeah. because you can, <laughs> you can be there. Yeah. Thank you. I'm just thinking about who I'm going to challenge next. Thanks. Thanks, Dad. <laughs>